Why do people get their testicles removed? As you can tell, this is an extremely important question, one that I'm sure you've thought about many times, but it poses other questions, like what happens after removal? Is it a big deal? Does it change a person's physiology? Well, in today's video, we're gonna answer those questions by going over five reasons why someone might have to remove their testicles. Some of those reasons might actually surprise you, and we'll also talk about the procedure or how they are removed. And yes, discuss the aftermath about what someone could expect about their lifestyle, their physiology, once one or more of what many males consider their prized possessions are removed. Some important stuff in here, so hopefully we don't drop the ball. Let's do this. So let's get right into this anatomy that's relevant to removing a testicle. So you probably guessed that we're gonna have to take a look at the groin region. So we're gonna take a look at this right side of the groin. You can see specifically here is the right scrotal sac or right scrotum. And inside, yes, everybody take a deep breath, is the right testicle or testis that you can see right underneath my probe here. And I do just wanna mention testis and testicle, same thing, we can use those interchangeably, so I will throughout the video. Very similar to like the plural versions, testes is the same thing as testicles. But this right testis you can see, if I flip it over, you can see we kept the connective tissue on this side, but removed it on this side so you could actually differentiate between the actual testis and the C-shaped structure called the epididymis. This epididymis essentially stores sperm cells that were produced by the testis. And this other structure we need to mention too, the spermatic cord is really important to some reasons why we might remove a testis. So I'm gonna mention inside there are blood vessels like veins and arteries, even nerve endings, and a really cool tube we've actually dissected out called the vas deferens, and the vas deferens transports sperm cells outside of the testis, but again, part of that spermatic cord. Now, when we're talking about the removal of a testicle or a testis, there's an actual procedure and a name for it called orchiectomy. Now, the first half of that word, the orc or orchi or orchid word root, actually means testis or testicle. Ectomy refers to surgical removal of. So you can see how that word translates. But there are two types of orche orchiectomies that I'm gonna mention. One is called a simple orchiectomy, and that's where they just make an incision in the scrotal sac and remove the testis and the epididymis alone. A radical orchiectomy, they remove those two structures that I mentioned, as well as the spermatic cord. And that incision would be up higher. You could even see in this canal, uh, this canal that I'm sticking the probe in where the spermatic cord's emerging from, this canal is called the inguinal canal. And so that incision would be up closer because they'd have to get into this canal to remove the actual spermatic cord. Now you might wonder, well, why would you do a simple versus a radical? Well, again, that depends on the condition you're treating or the reason for the testicle being removed. And so let's jump into some of these reasons to remove the actual testis or testicle. Now the first item on our list that I want to mention is the testicular torsion. Now, if a testicular torsion sounds bad to you, that's because it is. I mean, this is not a fun thing to have happen. What's going on here is the testicle and the spermatic cord are twisting within the scrotal sac. That doesn't look like it feels very good. And believe me, when I was in the emergency department during clinical rotations, during medical training, saw a few patients with this, and they were not happy. They were in a lot of pain. Now, people will always ask, well, what causes this to happen? Well, it can be caused just spontaneously. We don't know why it happens, just randomly out of nowhere. It can also happen with straining or physical activity and also happen due to trauma. Now, we also know that there are people who are more increased at risk for this is when the testicle or testis isn't fixed as firmly to the actual scrotal sac. Now, during the developmental process, it should be pulled fully down into the scrotal sac and attached firmly. But in some people, it doesn't fully get as strong of attachment and can increase their risk of a testicular torsion. So what is the treatment here? The initial treatment we're not looking for is just let's remove the testicle. We're trying to preserve the testicle. So the reason why it can happen in some cases is because of the blood vessels that are in here being twisted and compressed. If blood can't go in and out of the testicle as effectively, the testicular tissue could die off, which if we get necrotic testicular tissue, then we would remove it in that case. But initially, the first line treatment is, let's get this twist out, preserve the testicle, fix it to the scrotal sac firmly so it doesn't happen again, and hopefully that's all we have to do. But you could see, as that timeline increases, the longer somebody waits to get treatment, and the longer the testes don't have the blood supply, 
the greater risk for having to remove it due to a testicular torsion. So if you think you ever have a testicular torsion, one, it's not very subtle because it hurts pretty bad. Don't wait. Just go get it checked out. Make sure so you can preserve that testicle of yours. And the next item on the list we want to mention is cryptorchidism. Crypt in medical terminology means hidden. We already know orchid refers to testis or testicle, so apparently we have a hidden testicle on our hands. Now most of us know cryptorchidism as something that's commonly referred to as an undescended testicle. Now normally the testes should descend while you're developing inside mom, and just prior to birth they should make it through this inguinal canal that I mentioned earlier and push into the scrotal sac. Now, if that doesn't occur, even people who are born with an undescended testicle, often clinicians will wait about three to four months to see if it'll still come down spontaneously on its own. But after that four month period, we're looking into interventions. Now, some of you may be thinking, whoa, 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 you're telling me cryptorchidism or an undescended testicle means I'm gonna get a testicle removed? And some of you know people who've had that, had an undescended testicle, maybe you even had an undescended testicle, and you still got it, because you're right. The first line treatment is to actually bring it down and fixate it into the scrotal sac and make it so it can't retract up and just stays put where it's supposed to be. Now that's easy for us to say in say a first world country or somewhere where we have easy access to medical care. What if someone's in a developing country, doesn't have access to healthcare? Maybe this person made it into their teenage years or even adulthood without an un with an undescended testicle not being detected. And in that case, they may look into removing that testicle. Now there are variables that they'll have to consider, but in those cases, the testicle may have atrophied. There's also data that shows that undescended testicles increase the risk for testicular cancer. So these are considerations that may cause someone to have an orchiectomy due to crypto cryptorchidism. And speaking of cryptorchidism, if you want to be a little bit more hidden, like an undescended testicle, you might appreciate the sponsor of today's video, Private Internet Access. Private Internet Access is the world's most transparent VPN provider with over 30 million downloads. And if you don't know what a VPN stands for, it stands for Virtual Private Network. Because when you're online, browsing about, doing your thing, websites are constantly trying to get information about your location, your device, and your browsing habits. And Private Internet Access helps protect you from all these websites. It does this by changing your IP address and rerouting your internet traffic through an encrypted tunnel so that your online information is safe and private from internet service providers, network administrators, and even government sensors. It is also one of the most customizable VPNs and allows you to protect up to 10 devices at the same time. And still, one of my favorite features of a VPN is when I go out of the country and I wanna stream, say, like Netflix, and the Netflix settings won't let you stream certain videos in a different country, you can just turn on private internet access, change your location to your country of origin, and poof, back to watching your favorite shows. If you're interested in being a little bit more cryptic or hidden, go to privateinternetaccess.com slash IHA and you can get complete digital privacy for less than $2 a month and four extra months for free. That really comes out to about $1.98 per month and 83% off. The link is in the description below. Now the next item on this list is probably the condition that most people think about in regards to removing of a testicle, and that is testicular cancer. Now we could do a whole video just on testicular cancer, and we will, and even cancer in general. But let's just talk briefly about cancer starting in this testicle here. This would be the formation of abnormal cells that would essentially be growing out of control, and they could even grow to the point where you'd feel a palpable mass, even through the scrotal skin. And yes, we're concerned about the mass here and what it could do at the local level, but even more concerned about any of those cancerous cells leaving the testicle and going to other regions of the body. And you can see I'm tracing the spermatic cord for a reason, because remember, vasculature, which could be a pathway for cancerous cells to leave. And this is the situation where we'd see a radical orchiectomy, where we wouldn't just remove the testicle and surrounding structures here, but also that spermatic cord, which would be important for staging of the cancer and even assessing risk for those cells to spreading to other regions of the body. Now, one last thing I wanna mention about testicular cancer and even cancer in general, one of the most important things you can do is early detection, whether that's through routine physical exams with your primary care provider or learning about the signs or symptoms or risk factors for certain cancers, in, in this case, testicular cancer, and we'll put some information below that you guys can take a look at to kind of assess those risks and things to look out for. And next we have trauma. Now luckily the testicles do have some level of resiliency and so those average kicks to the jewels don't typically result in any long-term serious consequences, but with enough blunt force trauma, you can cause damage to the testicle and even cause rupturing in some cases. Even think about 
a penetrating trauma or a penetrating wound where it went through the scrotal tissue and into the testicle that obviously could cause damage and even rupturing. Now again, a clinician's knee-jerk response isn't to just yank that thing out of there. There's going to be a full assessment of the extent of the damage and even ruptured testicles can be repaired surgically to a certain degree. And there's actually data that shows that early intervention and early repair of a damaged testicle reduces the risk of a future need to remove that testicle if, it, again, it's handled early. Now, there are going to be cases where the damage is so extensive right from the get-go that it might just have to come out, unfortunately. And finally, on to the last item of our list. But I did forget to ask our video quiz question because we're asking quiz questions in each of our videos now. So let me ask that real quick and then we'll continue. But our quiz question is, what muscle or muscles would you need to engage in order to click the like button? I'm kidding, mostly. I say mostly because I would be all excited if you could answer that question. But our real question that has to do with some of the anatomy we talked about today is why are males more likely to develop an inguinal hernia or a groin hernia more so than females? If you know the answers to any of those questions, post them in the comments below and we'll actually pin a comment at the top that shows the correct answers to those so you can see if you got them right. But back on to this last item. The last item on our list is gender reassignment surgery. Now up to this point we've been really talking about a case where you'd remove just one testicle. But in gender reassignment surgery we would remove both testicles. And so obviously this is more of a choice situation than kind of conditions that we talked about in the earlier cases. But these, all these situations should maybe pose the question in you, well what happens afterwards? How well does somebody live with say one testicle versus even removing two testicles? Now with one testicle most people will do just fine and even in certain cases during the surgery the surgeon will ask the patient if they want a prosthetic testicle to be put in place of the one that they removed if the patient is concerned about or for cosmetic reasons or how the testicles will look afterwards. And if that one leftover testicle, not the prosthetic one, the one that's still there, is functioning properly, they can still have kids because they can produce sperm cells, even produce enough testosterone levels in some cases. Now granted, they may want to check testosterone levels to check and see, but each situation is a little different, but generally they do just fine and lead normal lives. Now in the case of gender reassignment surgery, you take both testicles away, obviously no sperm cells are going to be produced. And then testosterone levels are going to essentially just wipe off the map there or drain or drop dramatically. But that's kind of the point in that situation. And you could talk about other situations, say somebody had the testicles remove, removed in a situation that wasn't for gender reassignment. Then we just go through, well, if those testosterone levels are so low, that's going to affect muscle mass, fat distribution, libido, energy levels. We have a whole video on testosterone, which would answer those questions. So if you want to check those out, you can get a lot of deep excuse me, details from that. But hopefully that gives you guys a lot of different ideas on why you might remove the testicles. And it wasn't an all-inclusive list. We could always find other reasons for testicular removal. But again, like I said, hopefully that gives you the answers that you're looking for. If you have more questions, post them in the comments below. Like I said, engage those skeletal muscles if you feel the need to like and subscribe. And check out our VPN link to private internet access if you're interested in being a little more hidden and getting a discount there. And We'll see you in the next video.